Welcome to how to thin paint. Now, thinning paint is pretty much the most basic skill you'll need for painting miniatures. We're going to be dealing with acrylic paint. I'm going to be specifically talking about Citadel acrylic paints, but the techniques in here can be applied to literally any brand of acrylic paint. Why should you thin your paints? Well, it makes your paint go on smoother. If you've painted straight from the pot, you may have noticed that the paint dries with brush strokes and little bumps and stuff in, and each subsequent layer goes on top of that and makes it worse. Let's just give a quick demonstration. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go straight into demoing here. This is a pot of Mephiston Red from Citadel. It's a base paint, so it just means it's got more pigment in it, and it's designed to be fairly opaque. So you can see this is straight out of the pot. I'm gonna get some of this paint, and I'm gonna transfer this onto my palette, just so that I don't have to have the pot open so it dries out. As you can see, this doesn't really move around very much. It's sticking to my brush. Doesn't even care about gravity. Straight out of the pot. Should be able to see there as I move it back and forth so it reflects the light. Very bumpy. Big old brush stroke in there. That is not good. I'm just going to let that dry. And you can see it's not even covered fully. You would actually need two coats of that in order to cover and get a solid coat of Mephiston Red. So you have that is our paint dried out of the pot. So you can see it's now dried more matte. And you can actually kind of feel the texture of the paint. I'm just going to put another coat over that. Again, this is the paint that is unthinned straight from the pot. This is the demonstration of why you need to thin your paints. So, second coat. Trying to be smooth. Doing it in a few brush strokes. So yeah, as you can see, it's still not fully covered, but you can very clearly see brush strokes in it. Now, if you build that up over a few layers, it will get really, really bad. If you paint an entire model this way, you'd end up with a horribly textured mess. It's also not very easy to use and it's using a lot of paint in order to do it. So, our first step is we're gonna thin, thin this with some water. Just plain old tap water. Uh, I live in the UK, so my tap water is clean drinking water. If it's not, you might wanna use distilled water, but it's not a big issue. This little dropper bottle, it doesn't have to be in a dropper bottle, this is just for convenience. This contains just clean tap water. This is my water pot for cleaning my brushes. This is not clean water. It's got paint in it, hence the colour. Don't use this to thin your paints. That's a really terrible idea. You're going to be tinting any paint that you've got with the colour of your water. Use clean water. That's why I've got this dropper bottle. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to add one, two drops, let's say. And this doesn't really matter, the amount that I'm actually using. I'm going to take some of my paint. This is the unthinned paint. I'm going to mix it in to my water. That's a bit too thin for my purposes. And yeah, that looks good to me. And this is the first secret. There is no magic ratio for how much water to add to your paint, or in this case, paint to add to your water. Because every single paint is different. I have had this pot of Mephiston Red for a while now, and I keep having to add water to it in order to keep it thin. But I've had different pots of Mephiston Red from the same store, from the same rack, bought at the same time. And one of them was a thick, kludgy mess, and the other one was smooth as silk. It doesn't matter how much specific water you're adding, it's just not an issue. Every single paint pot is different. They're all made from different batches. There's absolutely no guarantee that the paint pot you pick up will have been on the shelf as long as the paint pot behind it. There is no so one ratio for how to thin your paints. So this is a good consistency, in my opinion. You may have heard the term, the consistency of skimmed milk. That is absolute bullhonky. That saying, thin your paint to the consistency of skimmed milk, has been doing the round since the 80s. It is meaningless as far as I'm concerned. Every time I talk to someone about how to thin their paints, they bring this up, they say, 
I don't know what that means. How do you know what the consistency of skimmed milk is? How do you measure it that accurately? It's like, you don't. You don't, it's not about that. It's a completely made up thing that someone wrote down one day because you know, we didn't have YouTube. We couldn't show you how to thin your paints very easily. They wrote it in magazines and said, paint, do it to the consistency of skimmed milk and then confused every hobbyist that ever came afterwards. And people still regurgitate it to this day as if it's useful advice. It's not. You thin your paint until it does what you want it to do. If you want it to be a glaze, you'll thin it a bit more than if you want it to be a layer. And that's all about transparency. But the most important thing is you want it to come off your brush. So here, this is paint that hasn't been thinned at all. It doesn't really flow very nicely. Still got a little bit of water in the bristles on my brush, but it's not coming off the brush very nicely. This I've thinned with two drops of water to an arbitrary amount of paint. It doesn't matter. I thinned it until it moved around. I load my brush up, which is overloaded currently, but see how much easier it is for the paint to come off the brush. That's what's important. This is why anytime you'll see someone mixing paints on YouTube, they will mix the paint and then they'll test it. They'll test it on something. The edge of the palette, the back of their hand, they'll test it somewhere to see how the paint is behaving. But you'll always end up testing your paint on something. That's the key thing. So here, this is probably still a little bit thin, so I'm gonna add a little bit more paint to it. If you ever need to thicken up your paint, just add more paint to it. Because I want this to be a nice base consistency, which will allow me to do an opaque coverage and a few, a few layers. Now, red is relatively transparent, so it tends to take more layers than other colors to cover. But now, I've got this paint on my brush. As you can see, I haven't added a specific amount. I've just added water and paint until it reaches a point that I am happy with. You can see it moves around. If we put it on the side there though, it's not moving on its own, which is good. That means it's gonna stay where I want it to go. Let's get our piece of black card. And next to this, we're going to paint another line. Now that's much easier. For a start, it feels like the paint is come, wants to come off your brush rather than trying to force it onto the surface. But after one coat, it's still a smooth texture. Just gonna get a bit more paint on my brush. I'm not loading up with a lot of paint, just a little bit. And we'll do another coat right here. And there we have a much smoother coat. In fact, I'm going to apply a third coat because you know you will have to apply more coats with thinned paint than unthinned paint, but ultimately it will result in a smoother finish. And remember, we're just look, really looking at the middle of this. So three layers, there you go. That's the difference it's making. This is completely smooth. There is still texture over here on this side, which I can definitely see close up. Might be harder for you to see on the camera. Try and get the light to reflect across it. But this thinned paint is completely smooth right here. And that's how you thin paint. There are different transparencies of paint that are needed for different techniques. This kind of base layer here, this, this is a, a base consistency as it's known, covers in two to three coats over black. Um, it's not thick, it's just got, you know, a decent amount of paint pigment to medium, which allows it to cover more quickly. If you want to thin this down more to say a layer consistency, that's when it, you would want to be able to have some translucency to it so that you can see the layers underneath and then you can build up a transition. So. I'm going to take some of my paint here, which is already dried out on my plastic palette. So this will need to be thinned again. I'm going to take some paint, put it in here, and you can see this is pretty opaque. So I'm going to take some more water, 
I'm going to add another couple of drops to that. Let's see how it behaves afterwards. So. so, as you can see, it's moving around a lot more. This is very watered down paint. But it is also now much more translucent. This is almost a glaze consistency, it's so thin. You can see that it's quite translucent in comparison to the previous layer. So, so there we go. Same paint, just more water. And you can see one of the qualities here, where you lift your brush off at the end, usually deposits the most amount of pigment in like a bit of a droplet. That's normal. And usually glazing techniques kind of depend upon that. As you can see, much more translucent. If we get some more, I'm going to do it in the opposite direction. I'm not going to go all the way down. I can see that we're building up our opacity here. I'm going to do another one further up. You can see again, it's the same paint as we apply more layers, it will get more opaque. So you can see it takes a lot more layers in order to build up to that opaque base there. But again, all we've done is add water to change the transparency of the paint there. Again, if you want to make your paint less transparent, add more paint from the pot back into it. That's all you have to do. A very thin glaze consistency is usually very difficult to control. And that's where we get into flow. Now flow is basically the surface tension of the paint, and this can be adjusted mostly by changing how much water is in it. One of the things you may notice, that's important, is in a very thin mixture over here, which is moving around a lot, as you can see, it retreats away. As you can see, it's retreating away. The surface tension is pulling the water into the middle and away from the edges. Now what can happen is a lot of newer painters will load up their brush massively. In fact, I'm gonna use a smaller brush to demonstrate this. I'm now gonna load this up with paint in a really amateur way. And this is completely loaded with paint. It's actually got so much paint in there and so much surface tension, it's pushing the bristles apart. This makes it very difficult to get a fine line. For example, as you can see, the paint just wants to go wee off the brush and onto the surface. This is not desirable at all. But you might need your paint to be this thin in order to be able to do something, but you want it to be under control. Very simple technique. Load your brush up, don't take it all the way to the ferrule though. And then just tap it against, just tap it against a piece of tissue until you've got your point back. And now you can paint very fine lines again, fully under control, and the transparency is again under your control. So you can see here, because this is such transparent paint, you can barely see it. And it's drying very quickly because there's so little paint and water there. You can barely see this at all. And there's another thing that tends to affect smaller brushes more than bigger brushes, because they don't, may not have the strength in their bristles in order to be able to hold a large amount of paint. If you have too much paint on your brush, you will lose control of it and it will just go and flow all over the model. You want to make sure that your paintbrush looks a bit like the tip of a felt tip pen. This sopping with paint here, that's too much paint. Do this. And now it's more under our control. We can paint much more controlled with it. Okay, so that's thinning your paint with water, and only water. Now I'm gonna go into some more advanced things.
mediums are something you can add to your paint instead of or in addition to water in order to change the properties of it. The most common medium that we add is water, just plain old tap water. Another common one you hear about a lot, Games Workshop's Lamian Medium. I don't really use this, I bought a bottle specific specifically to do this video. The other option, and this is the one I use, is Flow Improver. This is different to Airbrush Flow Improver, they are not the same product, they're completely different. Airbrush Flow Improver is a drying retarder, this is actually changing the surface tension of the paint. Now this is not to be applied neat, you mix this stuff, one part flow improver to 20 parts water, but the specific brand you get may differ. Uh, there'll be instructions on it. Follow the instructions. Simple as, simple as that. I mix up a big bottle of it. This is my bottle of water plus flow improver. And what the flow improver does is it reduces the surface tension of the paint. Thin your paints with this, and you'll be basically be thinning it with water to increase the flow, but it will also make the surface tension change. So. Let's examine how that affects the surface tension. First off, we'll get some fresh paint out. Now the surface tension on this is incredibly high, so high that it actually maintains into a big blob. So you can see here, thick old paint straight out of the pot. Now if we take some of that, put it into a new well, add some water to it until it's a decent thickness or thinness. Mix that up. Okay, so here, got a bunch of paint on here, and you can see that the surface tension is pulling the paint towards the middle. It's pulling it away from the edges of where you've painted it, essentially. That's undesirable in the most part. So now, I'm going to take some of our paint, put it over here, I'm going to add a drop of my flow improver and water mixture. And the consistency is pretty much the same as the one next to it. As you can see, it doesn't retreat from the edges anymore. It stays where it's put. The surface tension has been reduced so that the paint goes where you want it to be. It's not doing this weird thing here. It just stays where you want. It's not moving. That's the improvements of Flow Improver. Flow Improver doesn't thin the paint more. It doesn't make it more transparent any more than adding the same amount of extra water would. What it does is it stops the paint retreating from the edges of the, the brush stroke. So, I'm not entirely sure exactly what the effect of Lamian Medium will have, but we're going to find out together. So, there's some paint. Let's clean my brush so I don't contaminate the medium. This is one of the reasons why it sucks. Transfer this into a dropper bottle if you can. We'll get a little bit of that onto our thing, our paintbrush. And I could use a little bit more than that to get similar consistency. That looks better. So if this has flow improver in it, it will do the same thing and it won't retreat. Although it seems to be retreating a little bit more than the flow improver only paint. So, oh no, there is no flow improver in that whatsoever. That is actually worse than just adding water to it, in my opinion. That has, if anything, increased the surface tension of the paint over just water alone. That's terrible. That isn't, that isn't something I'd want to see at all. This must be why they say it's a wash, the, surf, the stuff they add to their washers. This is not, that's not a desirable effect at all. For it to do that is uh, very undesirable. Let's see how it actually paints. So this is interesting. It's actually dried patchy and more desaturated, which must be due to the matte uh, talc that has been added to this. That's why it's got a cloudy appearance. 
I happen to know that this stuff will make your paint more matte. And indeed, I think that's accurately the case. If you compare the shine coming off this patch here with the Lamium Medium to over here with the other paint, just the water or the flow improver added, there's a lot less shine coming off it and it's a lot more matte. I would argue this is basically just matte medium and water, um, which would explain, again, its cloudy appearance because that's the talc that makes something matte. And that's it. So this, I don't really recommend for decreasing the surface tension. It's actually, if anything, making it far, far worse. Stick with just flow improver and water if you want to have control over your paint. Okay. Another medium you may have heard of is matte medium or glaze medium. Now matte medium and glaze medium are basically the same thing. They're basically just acrylic medium. This is the essentially liquid plastic that is used in paint in order to bind the pigment to the surface. It has no color of its own apart from, in this case, white because it's matte and it's got a bunch of talc in it in order to scatter light more. But otherwise it is completely transparent. It'll look white in big droplets because it's scattering a lot of light. Now you use this in order to change the transparency of your paint without necessarily making it uh, thinner or flow more freely. Basically gives you a bit more control while doing glazes without having to say over thin your paint to the point where you, it's very easy to lose control of or where you have just a lot of paint. So I'm gonna do a quick demonstration. I'm gonna take some of my Efferston Red and I'm going to take that out of the pot, put it in a paint well down here. And again, we're going to take some of this unthinned, just on the tip of our brush. Paint it down. So this is unthinned paint. It's not flowing well, as we know will be the case. But this is its current transparency, which is relatively opaque. So this is my matte medium here. This is my paint. I'm going to take some paint add it to my matte medium. This is again, this is unthinned. I don't want to have too much paint on my brush. So. And we're going to see what happens with just matte medium added to it. Now it's still thick arguably still too thick. This is just one coat, just like the one next to it, which was straight out of the pot. I'm just gonna quickly dry it. And you can see that the transparency has changed. This is much more opaque after just one coat than this is. So as you can see, by adding the matte medium, we've changed not how the paint flows or moves, but how transparent the paint is. Very different properties. If you take that and you combine it with, say, a drop of water, over here, come on, one drop, that's plenty. We'll take some of this with our matte medium in it. So I'm just moving it around one side to the next. You can see it's still got that surface tension that we don't like because it's just water. And again, it seems to increase the surface tension, which is why I believe Lamian Medium is just matte medium plus water. Take that, and now I've got thinned down paint. That in one coat flows much nicer and is much more translucent. Now I often find that when I make a glaze, I sometimes go back to adding a bit more matte medium into it. I go back to adding more matte medium into it in order to thicken it up so I've got a bit more control over it. But typically I will use this in combination with my flow improver in order to make glazes that flow well without being so thin that they're hard to control. 
because if you add too much water, you end up with a wash consistency. And that's where you completely lose control of the paint and it will just flow into all the recesses. That's kind of advanced thinning, advanced uh, mediums, if you will. And there's only one that I recommend, Flow Improver. Everything else is very situational, but I use this as you can see, this is my water bottle. This is where I get all of my water for thinning all of my paint with all the time. And this is a mixture of this and water. And that's all I use. I don't use anything else. I don't add any matte medium into that because that is completely situational. You don't want to add matte medium to everything because it will change the surface tension. It will, it will increase the surface tension of your paint and it increases the transparency of your paint, which may not be a thing you want and you can achieve that increase transparency just by adding more thinner. This is not thinner. This is. I hope this has helped you with thinning paints and uh, I hope that the information I've presented to you has been useful and informative. Um, I'll be doing more of these Hobby Essentials videos. The next one will be thinning paints for airbrush, kind of a how to thin paints part two, if you will, but I'm splitting them up so the people who don't want to use an airbrush do not have to sit through a bunch of airbrushing stuff and vice versa. Um, spoiler alert, it will include this stuff again. But there we go. That is how to thin paint, or at least it's how I thin paints. I'm gonna put the caveat right at the end there. This is how I thin paint. Um, this is the way that I found works for me. If you've got a way that works for you, comment below with how you thin paints and how you prefer to use it. I'm sure there will be plenty of opinion in the comments on this video, but hopefully I've taught you something that you didn't already know. Um, this video was basically for beginners and you know, beginner to intermediates, I guess. If you already know how to thin paints, why are you watching this video? Thank you for watching. There will be more hobby essentials in the future. Please keep an eye out for those. And if you like what you see, give us a subscribe. There's a button somewhere down there or over there. I don't know, it depends on what you're watching up on. And uh, there's links in the description to all of my social medias, uh, my Patreon and all of that stuff, where you can check me out and support me. And uh, yeah, good times. Um, oh yeah, you can subscribe there, end screen. Subscribe there. Uh, that's my Patreon there. There's another video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like. And um, this is my social media stuff over here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the future. Uh, yeah. Bye-bye.